hey what's up so this is the current state that we are on so each time the user clicks the button we will fetch some data but of course let me just run our api our polux api so just cd into that folder and npm run dev but before i run it let me actually minimize uh, the delay to two seconds and this is it so first thing uh, there is something that got pointed out which is you don't need to use Krakow for like um, for these kind of imports so Krakow gives us an aliases which is just for which is the same thing as with back aliases but if you want to use like uh, absolute imports from the root of your maybe project you can actually use a JS config the same way we use TS config in TypeScript so I didn't know actually this thing existed uh, which is very nice. Someone actually pointed that out uh, in the first video, but I didn't have that chance to reply to them and I think the comment got deleted or they deleted it. But this is actually the documentation. I'll put a link in the description. So basically they tell you that this is what you usually do. Uh, you can have absolute imports by adding this inside a JS config file or a TS config file. I know about TS config, but this is actually the first time I see JS config, which is very nice. So Let's actually put this here and let's, let's just copy this one. So this is not the same as Krakow aliases or Webback aliases. This is an absolute import. So some of the stuff will actually break, but let me actually, let me fix it with you. So first thing, let's stop the server and let's uninstall Krakow. So npm uninstall Krakow at, or at Krakow for slash Krakow. And we need to actually return these from Krakow to the active scripts. Let's just finish this. Let's just wait to this uh, to be finished. Now we can actually do this. And let's try to run it. It will fail. And let me show you what will happen. Or why it will fail. Because remember, now we can uh, we can import stuff using uh, an absolute import, which starts from the source. So as you can see, context and at UI are actually in the source directly. So these two imports will work and we can have auto completion which is very nice uh, but the one that will not work because we actually were using an alias that is different from the absolute path is the constants and they will actually tell us so i can't resolve at constants so what we need to do is first thing let me search where i am using this click in the app header yeah and to import the constants using an absolute path so we will start from the source. Now we go to the app, now to the constant, and that's it. So this now will work and we can fetch the data. And we can now delete this. And this is fine. So to start now actually implementing the stuff we want to implement, which is each time the user scrolls to the end, I want to fetch the next page. So fetching on a scroll, that's what I am going to do. And uh, yeah, to do it, first thing I'm gonna make this query enabled by default. So the we will stop like fetching that on a click. Let me save and hit refresh. So as you can see, by default, it will actually start fetching that. This is the behavior event we want. When we reach the end, we want to somehow refetch the data again with the next page. So to do this, I'm gonna actually update this key to have two keys. The first one is the name of the query that I'm going to use, which is fetch, fetch posts. The second one will be the page, the current page I am on. And this page, I'm going to store it in the constant, in the context, sorry. So let me go to the post context here. And I'm going to update this. So this is going to be an object now with data, which is the posts and the page. By default, this will be one. And let me change the, these names. So posts, context like this i'm gonna make it a camel case and this will be set post context so this will be here and this one will be here and uh, i think you can just remove this one you don't need it and we need to change some of change some of the stuffs stuff first thing is this so this would be like this to data dot length and here dot data dot map and in the app header, when we actually put these, 
So this would be zip post, or this one would be post context, and this one be zip posts context, and we will use this one here. But remember, this now is an object, so we need to put the data. But before that, we need to actually destruct the previous context, so we actually save it. For example, if we change the page number, we don't want to lose that when we actually set the data. So this should make it. And this is this like where syntax is equivalent to this. Remember, they are both same tokens, so you can just emit this and it will work. So now our app will still work and we have our uh, page number. So let's actually put the page number inside these keys, the query keys. So I'm going to add a comma and dot page. So each time the page changes, this query will run again. And we need somehow to inject this page here. You can do this. But I don't think this is a good idea. Uh, what the React query or what the React query library does is it will give you these keys, these two keys inside, or it will pass them inside the callback function that you gave them. And they exist, let's say this is the like the API. So this we need to retain this, but inside the API we have the query key. So let's actually just destruct it here, because this is the only thing we are, we are using. I think this is like very readable. I'm telling each one that reads the code, I'm only using the query key, and that's it. Um, maybe you disagree, but this is the way I think about it. This is how I read code. If someone distracting thing, something, I understand that this is the only thing that, yeah, that they are using here. So, um, and the query key would be the same thing as these. So this, it will be an array, and we need the first index in the array, not the, sec not the zero element, the first one. Or yeah, the second element, not the first element. And the first element has an index of zero, so we can actually ignore that by adding a comma. Now this will be the page. So just to be clear, this is equivalent to this. So these two lines are the same. Okay, they end up the same thing. I'm gonna leave this just as a reference. But I think, uh, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Use anyone you want, but I'm gonna use this one. So this is now the page. So let's actually refresh and let me open the inspect. I want to see the network. So as you can see, you can see it, right? It would be page one. Uh, yeah, it would be page one and you can see it here. So by default, which is nice. So now we need a way to detect that if the user uh, reaches the last element or not, or reaches this point or not. So in posts, I'm gonna put A box element at the end. I'm gonna give it a background of purple 500. So each time we reach this box, we need to fetch the data again. To do this, there is an API called the Intersection Observer API. It's built in in the browsers, but this is the actual support. So the only one you need to worry about is uh, this one, this guy. But I don't think you need to care. Um, it's, it's fine to use it. Maybe you can find a polyfill or maybe find another way to detect. If you are an Internet Explorer, do the following stuff to detect if I reach uh, this element or not. But basically, this API, you will make the browser monitor a specific DOM node. For example, in our case, this will be this DOM, this DOM node, this div. And each time the user sees at least one pixel of it, we will do some uh, thing. So but that's basically what this API does, or one of the stuff that this API does. It will monitor some DOM element. If the user sees it on their screen, the browser will tell you, and they will tell you by actually, you will give them, you will give them a callback function, and they will execute that callback function for you when you see this uh, element. So I think you should definitely read about it, but in this video, I'm going introduce it, to introduce it like this, and I'm going to use this package. It's called React Intersection Observer. They will give you a component, and each children you give it, you give it as a uh, as a children in React, it will observe, and it will actually call this uh, on a change function each time the user sees the children. So it's, as you can see, I'm the target element. Each time the user sees it, this call, this callback function will actually be called. Uh, so let me show you how you can use it. So you'll install it like this. 
let's come here and open a new uh, terminal. And in the posts, I'm gonna do the following. So let me actually uh, open the previous code in a different screen. So here, import observer from add. Uh, this this is the name of the package we installed, and we're gonna wrap this box with the observer. And on change, we can actually pass a callback function. This would be event, and let's just console log the event and see what this would give us. So inspect. So as you can see, this is. The event is intersecting true and it will give us a bunch of stuff we will only care about is intersecting so so if I go over it reach to it and go out you'll see that we have is intersecting as false so let's actually go and destruct this one and we will check if we have if you are intersecting I'm gonna change the post context by increasing the page so set post context this I'm gonna destruct the original post context then I'm gonna increase the page like this by using the post context to page plus one and this now actually should do it so let's this monitor the behavior together so each time we reach the end the data will be fetched again and we should see this but I think there is some bug Yeah, the data actually changes, but we are only displaying 10. As you can see, I hope you can see that, but the data would actually change because we actually went to the next page, but that we actually, we did not like concatenate the previous data with the current data. So let's actually see the network tab. So now it's page six. Now it's page seven. Now it's page eight and so on. So let's actually do that. Let's concatenate the previous posts with the current posts. This actually could be could happen in the app or should happen there. So as you can see, I'm just adding the data that I have in the context and, that, and that's it. But what I should actually do is to destruct the previous data with the current data or spread them together like this. And this actually should do it. So let's refresh. So page one, we will start there and scroll to the end. So now we will go to page two, and as you can see, the scroll bar got increased. So we have now 20 posts. So let's go to the network tab. So we'll have these. Now page four. Page five, and so on. So this is basically it, but let's try to make this better by like displaying a loading a loading toast. So I'm gonna use another use effect. So use effect. I'm gonna check for is loading, which we get from React query and is fetching. We also get it from there. I'm gonna say is is loading or is fetching. Display the toast that we actually. We were, we were displaying here, so I'm going to display it here. I'm going to remove this after two seconds. And I'm going to remove this one. And uh, yeah, this should be it. So let's actually refresh. So now we are fetching. And let's go down. We will fetch, and we will fetch again. Let me mute my phone. And yeah, that's it. I think a much more realistic, I mean, much more realistic example to handle a case where the user will do maybe something like this. So, not sure what will happen now. Or let's actually open the inspect and go to the network. So, what, what, what will happen if I do this? Yeah, I think you need to handle this case or I need to handle it because I don't think this is a good idea. So, what we can do is... Um, 
I want to actually increase the page. So in the post contacts, we need to actually save if the data is loading or not. So let's go to the post contacts. So by default, loading would be false. Right? And in the app header, each time we actually put use the query or fetch the data by and this is the indication is loading is true or is switching is true. I'm gonna set the loading or first thing I'm gonna save the previous data. Now I'm gonna put loading to true and loading will be false on the else. But right? this will be false. And why I did this? Because in the post context or sorry, in the posts component. What is that? Yeah, here. I'm gonna, I won't actually increase the page if the current data is being loaded and we are saving that information in the context. So, right, so I'm gonna check also and and post context of loading. Not loading. So, if we are not loading and uh, we are intersecting, now load the next page. So, this should actually solve this uh, issue that we faced. So, by default, this will be, I think we have something, some issue. Uh, I think the issue is that I am updating the context here with the previous data of the post context. So this will be lost, I think. So, I think I need to do to maybe let me just remove this one Gandhi bucket review. I'm gonna remove this one as well. I think now this should work. So yeah. I think we can do this so previous. This is what I usually do when there's some, some timing issues. This will actually give me the current value in that state uh, without like depending on this. So I'm gonna destruct the previous. So this should work now. Yeah, this should work. So just remember if you have some timing issue, this is some this is a timing issue because the post context that I'm destructing here is not yet updated with the data from here that we I actually added to the uh, state. So if you have this timing issues, you can use a callback function in the update state or in the set the state function. Remember that this actually behind the scenes is just the user state hook. So this is a very nice way to do it. Um, yeah, so I, I need to do the same thing here. I'm going to return an object. I'm going to destruct the previous. And this, let me refresh to start from, the, from scratch. And now when we reach to the bottom, the behavior will stay the same, but if I did this crazy like scrolling down and up, only one page will be loaded. So yeah, I think we achieved what we wanted and uh, I hope this was useful. In the next videos, we will start by actually seeing the most important stuff, which is the mutations and uh, I mean, th these things are also equally important, but yeah, we will see mutations, uh, post and put and delete requests. Sorry. Um, post and put and uh, delete requests. I think that's it for this video and uh, bye.